From the archives of the greatest dramas in radio history, we proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater, starring Greer Garson and Walter Pidgeon in Mrs. Parkington. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When the radio theater first presented Greer Garson and Walter Pidgeon on this stage, they were already one of the greatest box office teams in history. And their fame and popularity have mounted through the years. Two brilliant stars whose every appearance is an event. Tonight they bring us metro goldwyn Mayer's epic screenplay, Mrs. Parkington, the story of a man who all but conquers the world for the woman he loves whose great inheritance is finally entrusted to her courage and her wisdom. It's curtain time, and here's act one of Mrs. Parkington, starring Greer Garson in the title role and Walter Pigeon as the major. Christmas night, 1938. In the great old Parkington mansion on New York's Fifth Avenue... Mrs. Susan Parkington, aged 84, has just entered her sitting room. In her hand is a glass of champagne. Now, 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 ma'am. No more champagne. Don't you dare touch it, Matthew. I only had one glass of dinner, you know. You're getting old, Matthew. You need to sleep. Get to bed. I'll be glad to stay if you don't want to be alone. I'm never alone in this room. It's too full of memories. Now, shoot. Go on. Get to bed. Where's Johnny? Great Granny? Merry Christmas, Great Granny. Jane, your father said you were ill, dear. The cold. Oh, he was making excuses for me. I tried to get here before they all left. How's dinner, Great Granny? Oh, just about the same as every family gathering. Rather dull. Why weren't you here, Jane? Darling, I, I've come now only to say goodbye. Please forgive me and don't ask me to explain. I think I can guess, Jane. It's that young man, eh? You're the most dangerous woman I know. How do you manage to be so clever? <laughs> it's very simple. First you get born, and then you sit back and wait 84 years. Well? We're, we're going to be married. Married, eh? I don't even know his name. His name is Ned Talbot. He was working in Father's office, and I... What makes you think you love him? Oh, because he's everything to me. He's... Well, maybe I should just say that I love him the way you must have loved the Major. Jane, there's no need to go away, dear. I'll talk to your father. Oh, but it isn't father. It's Ned. Our name, our money, he wants no part of it. That's why he says we have to leave here. I want to see this young man of yours, Jane. Tonight. Oh, but it's getting late and our boat leaves early in the morning. I want to see him. Just go find him. I'll wait by the window here and watch for you. Yes, great granny. I'll hurry, darling. It's exciting to sit here and wait for the future the first time. Many, many years ago, I looked out another window. <laughs> there he came, galloping up the street to our boarding house. For some reason, he looked up, and heaven help me, I winked at him. <laughs> he was talking to my mother when I came downstairs. Oh, but madam, they told me Graham's was the best boarding house in Leaping Rock. It's the only boarding house in Leaping Rock. But we're all filled up. The gentleman could have my room, Mother, if he's not staying too long. Well, that sounds like a nice, cozy arrangement. Do you accept it, sir? Mrs. Graham, I never refuse a lady's hospitality. Excuse me, I'll fetch my bag. Imagine me almost turning him away, Susie. Major Augustus Parkington, the man who owns the mine. Well, hang up his clothes, Bill. Why, look. What kind of a contraption is that? What? You see? A high silk hat that opens up. Ma. How do I look in it? Oh, very elegant. But don't let him catch you wearing it. Well, finish up. I've got to get the bread in the oven. A high silk hat. Oh, if I were a man, if I were a man, if I'd... If you were a man, I'm pretty sure you'd wear a hat that fits you a little better than mine. Oh, I, uh, I've just been hanging up your clothes, sir. Uh, Miss Graham, why did you, uh, wink at me when I drove up? I didn't. Oh, but you did. Well, well, what if I did? I have a theory. If a girl winks, she kisses. Not me. Oh, you too. 
Now, just a minute. Oh. Uh, uh. There. You see? You too. I hope you'll be very comfortable here, Major Parsons. No, 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 wait a minute. Susie. Uh, it, uh, it is Susie, isn't it? Yes, it is, Major Parkington. I've given you my room, and I wish you'd go in and use it. I've got some beds to make. But I have such romantic things to say to you. To me and every other woman you meet. Oh, but I never met a girl with character like yours. Now, now, don't ask me how I found out. It's, it's just instinct, I guess. Do you believe me? No. Besides, you're leaving on Friday. Who knows? I may spend the rest of my life here. Why should you? Because you're so adorable. Does all this mean that you want to marry me, Major Parkinson? Marry you? Uh, marry you? Huh. Huh? Strange how that little word can cool off a man. Even a man from New York. Supper at six o'clock, Major. Marry her? By George and by Jasper. Who does she think she is? <laughs> Susie. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Humphrey. Careful. Floor's all soap, son. Isn't your ma here? She's at the mine. She took the men's lunch. Major Parkington's at the mine, too. Doesn't interest me in the least. You know what he's been doing all week? Swinging a pick right along with the rest of them. Oh, the major, the major. I'm sorry, but I don't want to hear another word about the major. Susie Graham, well, I believe in her. What was that? The mine. Susie. Mother. My mother. Susie, I can't tell you how sorry I am. Why she was killed, why I escaped, I just don't know. But don't worry. I'm going to take care of you. I want... Susie, one thing I can bear even less than a woman who cries is a woman who doesn't cry. Well, well, just don't sit there staring. Susie! your clothes packed in just a moment, Major Parkington. Oh, here. Here's your money. Oh, I meant you to keep that. It's $500. Thank you. I never take tips. Susie, what's going to happen to you? Oh, I'll be all right. Are, uh, are there any more things to be packed? Yes, a lot more. Oh, but those are my clothes. I'm quite aware of that. Susie, you're coming with me to New York. And don't look like that. Don't you understand? I'm going to marry you. Matt? I wish you and madame a long and prosperous life on behalf of this hotel, myself, and the city of New York. Good night, major. Good night. Well, Susie? Oh, Gus, I'm scared. Ah, oh, now, don't be frightened, Sparrow. Come on, we'll drink to the future, eh? Our future. We'll conquer this town. Champagne. The whole country, the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you like champagne, Sparrow? It tickles. Why'd you call me Sparrow? I once found a little sparrow. Its heart was beating like yours is now. It was soft and gray, and, well, I taught it to fly. Gus, Gus, why did you marry me? Oh, life was getting too simple without you. Susie, did I ever tell you that you're adorable? Is this real gaslight, Gus? I never seen. There. It's turned. It's turned off. And it was gaslight, Susie. But calling on me at 8 o'clock in the morning. Gus, it isn't fair. My hair, my face. I simply had to see you, Aspasia. It's very important. And what is so urgent? I got married. Oh? In Nevada. And you left her there? Of course not. She's asleep in the hotel. I... I don't know what to say, Gus. Somehow I always thought if Augustus Parkington ever stood before an altar, I would be the one standing next to him. Well, the main thing is that you are happy. But I'm not. I've married a woman I don't want to hurt, and I know that soon, very soon, I'm sure to hurt her. I only hope she will hurt you. Too. Not a chance. I want to take her with me everywhere. And wherever we go, people will stare at me and envy me, just as they envied me you. So I, I need your help to save you. You're a scoundrel. Oh, well, go down to your office and make some more money. You can leave your lady to me. 
I knew you were a friend. But she is your wife. And I can't wait to meet her, Major Parkington. But who are you? Good morning, Mrs. Parkington. Your husband sent me. I am the Baroness Conti, Aspasia to my friends. How, how long have you been here? Just a few moments. You are sleeping so blissfully. My husband? Where is he? He needs office. You feel uh, lonely already? A little. There is one infallible cure. Go out and spend his money. Now, come on, get up, get Oh, hello. And what is that you are wearing? My new nighty. The major said he liked it. Well, now I'm certain. Gus must be very much in love with the grounds will be delivered to your hotel. Oh, if Madame will kindly see the bill is correct. Aspasia, look. I don't even know if Gus has that much money. Susie, you are married to Major Augustus Parkington. Sign the bill. Well, Gus is going to be very angry with me. Uh, very angry. If he sees this signature, Susie Graham. What? <laughs> oh, I forgot the Parkington. <laughs> <laughs> Six years ago. <laughs> Sixty-six years ago. How many times have I signed that name since? Mrs. Parkington. <laughs> Mrs. Augustus Parkington. Wait, Granny. Let me come in. Jane? Well, of course. Oh, this... This is Ned. How do you do, Mrs. Parkington? Sit down, Mr. Talbot. Well, it's rather late now. Boat sails early in the morning well, and... what of it? I have a job at the Peruvia Mining Company, Mrs. Parkington which I won't have if we stay here. Oh, you'll be welcome whenever you arrive. I happen to be one of the principal stockholders of Peruvia. But they didn't hire me as a member of this family. Evidently, you're a snob, Mr. Talbot. Have you, uh, Have you had any trouble with Jane's father? No. You worked in his accounting department. He fired you. No, I left. Now you want to leave the country. I wonder why. Oh, you think I have to leave the country? No, no, Mr. Talbot. But I do believe that you're trying to protect someone. Jane's father, perhaps. Ned, what on earth is she talking about? Well, look, Jane, this is all just a waste of time. Jane's we... happiness is not a waste of time. Jane, here's a young man who wants to whisk you away from everyone who loves you. And he doesn't trust you enough to tell you his reasons. Ned. All right. While I was working in your father's office, Jane, I discovered that two of the accountants were government men. They've been investigating the firm. Any day now, the whole thing's going to crack wide open. You're accusing Jane's father of fraud? It's true. I'm sorry, Jane, don't you see? I'd have to testify if I stayed here. I can't perjure myself, and, well, I wouldn't help him if I did. Jane, your father must be given a chance to answer these accusations. Call him up, tell him I want to see him right away. It's incredible. Why, I've never heard such a... Talbot, if I were a younger man, I'd give you such a beating. You... Why, I can have you arrested for what you've just said. It's libel. The important thing is, Amory, did he tell the truth? If it were true, don't you suppose this... this interloper would have notified the police? All I've tried to do is to get Jane away from here. Yes, so you could get your hands on some Parkington money. I didn't finish. I want to get Jane away from here, Mr. Stillam, before the government men who are now working in your office expose you. What? Uh, I'd like to talk to my lawyer. Do you mind if I use the telephone inside? Well, anything more to say, Mr. Talbot? No, I, I don't think so. Well, then we'll just sit here and wait till Mr. Fillon comes back. The other room? Why didn't he use this telephone? Excuse me. Mr. Fillon! Oh, let go of me. I tell you, it's the only... You might have let me alone this time, Mr. Talbot. It would have solved your difficulties about testifying and not testifying. Father. Shooting yourself won't undo the wrong. Oh, can't you ever think of anything except what's right or wrong? He's still my father. Jane, I... I'm leaving. I'd like you to come with me. No, never. Never. Well, that's that. Congratulations, Mrs. Parkington. There's a lot of a major in you, Jane. I hope your father appreciates it. Well, Amory. I thought that killing myself would be easier than going to jail. This afternoon, Amory, before the others came in for dinner, you were trying to sound me out about a loan, weren't you? Yes. If I could only float a new issue, maybe I could pay back all that I... Had borrowed. 
After all, is what I've done any different from what the Major used to do in Wall Street? My husband gambled with his own money. I'm sorry. Granny, you're not going to let them take me. No. Perhaps you can still float that issue with my money. Hmm? My money? It's really not mine, is it? I won't be around very much longer. So it's really their money. <laughs> the heirs, Amory. They're the ones who'll have to decide. It's got to be done quickly if it's to do any good. Mrs. Parkinson, I thought I heard a shot. Yes, Matty, you did. Tell Taylor to get the car. He's to fetch every member of my family, and they're all to come here at once, and I'll accept no refusal. <laughs> In a moment, we'll continue with Act Two of Mrs. Parkington, starring Greer Garson and Walter Pigeon. Even though... We continue with the second act of tonight's play, starring Greer Garson as Mrs. Parkington and Walter Pigeon as the Major. A few moments have passed. Jane, her father, and old Mrs. Parkington await the arrival of the rest of the family. Suddenly, Mrs. Parkington walks across the room and picks up from the floor the remnants of a little Dresden china ornament. I broke it, grandmother. I'm sorry. When Talbot took that gun from me, I <laughs> must have... Now this one's gone, too. They were a pair, you know. <laughs> The Major gave them to me the day I first came into this house. <laughs> I remember we were calling on a friend of his, a Mr... Mr... Mr. C.G. Smith. <laughs> the Major had bought the Dresden figures as a gift. I can't understand it. Why doesn't someone answer the door? If Mr. Smith isn't home, Gus, you can give the ornaments to me. Why? As a present. Oh. This is a special day. Oh. oh, Gus, let's come back some other time. Really, I want you alone today. Why are you always talking about today? What's today? Our third wedding anniversary in Major Parkington. I certainly hoped you'd remember. Great Scott. Three years. I never believed I could have stood it so long. <laughs> come on. Open up here. Hey, look, Susie. The door's unlocked. Oh, we can't go in. When I pay a call, I pay a call. We're going in. I've never seen such a mansion, Gus. Mm. Mr. Smith must have spent a fortune on his place. Built it for his wife, I understand. Ugly as sin, but he likes her. Well, just one room more. Here, the library. There's uh, supposed to be a painting of the old goat in here someplace. Oh, yes, uh, there it is. Gus! Well, what do you think of the portrait? Darling, it's... <laughs> oh, and so fierce and handsome. Well, you know, I guess this wasn't C.G. Smith's house after all. God, huh? you don't mean... You wanted a house, Sparrow? I've been two years building this anniversary present. Oh, and, and I thought you forgot it. I never forget my mistakes, Susie. <gasps> Susie, is that you, Chavis? Aspasia! Oh, come in. How did you know? Never mind. What do you think of your little bungalow? I'm a... Oh, it's... Oh... Well, I, I just don't know what to say. Come on with me. I'll show you around. Oh, oh show us face around. Well, that is good. Why, well, you have her to thank for everything. Oh? Oh, oh I see. You, you helped. Hmm? Help? She did everything. Susie, you're lucky. Very few women could have another woman do all that for them. Yes. Yes, the poor things have to do their own shopping. Oh. Aspasia, thank you very much. You buy my clothes... You arrange all my lessons. Now you furnish my house. Really, I... I hate to give you any more trouble. I have forgotten something, Cherie. Yes. I didn't notice a nursery anywhere. Uh, now, Gus, don't look so startled. Susie, sit down this instant. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 you've been to the doctor? Yes. Every, everything's all right? Quite all right. This was my surprise for you. It will be a boy. 
Don't you think so, Aspasia? Oh, without a doubt. The Jacob Livingstons, the Van Dynes, the Marbury's, we'll invite everybody. What on earth are you talking about? We have to celebrate, don't we? The Parkingtons are giving a ball. When my son grows up, he'll have to know the right people. Your son may be a girl, Gus. Well, that's all the more reason. Do you think I'd have my daughter marry a nobody? You married one, Gus. There aren't two nobodies like you born in the same century. You're my wife. I want them to see who you are and what you are. We'll have the grandest ball that Fifth Avenue's ever seen. Gold engraved invitations, Susie, and a 40-piece orchestra. I'll make all the arrangements, Gus. Good. And look, hire that tenor Cellini from the opera. And oh, get her a gown, Aspasia. One that'll knock their eyes out. Susie, the Parkingtons are about to go into society. Will you look at these? Look, Susie, telegrams. They've been streaming in by the dozen. The Jacob Livingstons regret they cannot attend. The Colbys are suddenly called out of town. <laughs> Mrs. Whitney Harrison is unfortunately stricken with la grip. Well, how many have come? Six or seven. The Mardis and Mr. and Mrs. Quincy. Yeah. We invited 200. 200, Susie. Because it's snowing quite hard. I'm sure the others have just been delayed. I've never been so insulted in all my life. Please, dear, come inside. The, the orchestra's love, and I'm sure to see it. Oh, yes, Baroness. I stopped off at the opera house on my way. I'm sure I saw them. The Livingstone, the Apple Gate, Mrs. Van Dyne, a charming woman. Ah. And... So that's where they are. Oh, Major, I will ask James to serve supper. It's getting rather late, and I'm sure this snow The snowstorm gone. didn't keep him away from the opera. The swine. All right, we'll have supper. What's happened to Marbury's and the Quincy? They're dancing, dear. Well, tell them to stop dancing. By George and by Jasper, supper's ready, and we're going to eat supper. There's plenty of room, Mrs. Parkington, but do you mind if I sit a little closer to you? Please do. Well, you were very brave, Mr. Marby, to come out in this awful snowstorm. Yes, the snow is all of an inch deep, Mrs. Parkington. Yes, I know. <laughs> but it's not the storm that's keeping everyone away. I'm afraid it's the Major's wife. You see, not so long ago, I was scrubbing floors in my mother's boarding house. And... Leaping Rock, Nevada. No, you're not the reason. Didn't you read the evening paper? Your husband applied for membership in the United Club. He uh, made rather an unusual speech today in giving us his qualifications. Gus always says what he thinks. Yes. Yeah. Among other things, he explained his military rank. It seems that during the war, he shot a Confederate major. <laughs> if he'd shot a general, he'd have called himself a general. But what's that to do with it? Well, the president of the club, Commodore Beaumont, objected. The major asked him what Commodore did he kill. Then we took a vote. There were 80 black balls and one white. You see, when you offend a Beaumont, you offend all New York. Then why are you here? Well, the white ball was mine. Thank you. Now I understand. Don't let it bother you. Oh, it doesn't, but I know my husband. And he won't take this lying down. Ladies and gentlemen, I had a treat in store for you tonight. Signor Cellini, the famous tenor. Unfortunately, he objects to singing for so small an audience. I hope you won't mind if I augment it. Go. Orchestra leader. Confound it, are you deaf? Stop that noise. Oh, yes, monsieur. Gus, please. All right, Susie. I want you and your musicians to sit with us as my guests. Yes, all of you now. Oh, thank you, monsieur. Well, get a move on. And you waiters, too. The servants, everybody. I planned a ball Fifth Avenue you'll never forget. And by George and by Jasper, it's going to be. Major Parkinson, I simply cannot consider the idea I of... paid you to sing, Cellini, so sing. I think Mrs. Quincy and I had better be leaving, Major. Why, Mr. Quincy? My wife, a touch of uh, indigestion. Oh, good. Why don't you all go? Indeed, I just wish I... I don't need you. I don't need any of you, and neither does my wife. I don't feel too well, Aspasia. I think I'd better... Gus! Doctor, will she be all right? There's nothing wrong? 
Mrs. Parkington's going to be fine. Oh, good. Only, well, this time there won't be a child major. Hmm. You may see your wife now. She's asking. I'm so sorry. Hush, darling. Quiet. I know how, how much you want, son. Susie, Sparrow, you're all that matters. We'll... We'll have other children, Gus. Just try to rest, darling. Try to sleep. How is she, Gus? Asleep, finally. Aspasia, I want a list of everyone who was invited and didn't come tonight. I'll pay them back, every last one of them. They killed my son. <laughs> Ah, Maddie said you were looking for me. Anything important, dear? Gus, I had a visitor a little while ago, Mrs. Jacob Livingston. Well, after four long years, Mrs. Jacob Livingston calls on Mrs. Parkington. Gus, I'm going away. Good, I'll come along. No, you don't understand. I'm leaving you. And uh, what brought this about? Why do you want to go away? Because I'm ashamed to be your wife. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what's happened during the past four years. Happened? We've had two wonderful children. I've made a few million. That's what's happened. But that's not all, is it? For four years, you've lived for one purpose. To get back at the men who didn't see fit to respond to some gold engraved invitations. Susie! George Bowman's committed suicide. Thomas Fenton's in a sanitarium. And Jacob Livingston's about to be wiped out. I'm talking about that list of yours. Major Parkington's list. The list that everyone in New York seems to know about except your wife. Why does Mrs. Livingston have to come here and tell me what's going on? Well, now that I do know, I want no part of it. I want it to be your wife, but you don't need me. Goodbye, Gus. Susie. Susie, come back here. Well, all right, then. You can get out and stay out. <laughs> But take my advice. Go back to Gus. I know him, and you must make the first move. I know him, too, Aspasia. And if you could... Gus! Well, Aspasia and I were just talking about you. Don't close that door, Major Parkington. i leave you two alone. Gus, you're looking thinner. No? No, perhaps not, but then I haven't seen you for uh, nine weeks. Ten weeks. Oh, Sparrow, it's no kind of a life without you. I've missed you every moment, day and night. I missed you, too. Even my luck went with you. Everything I try goes wrong. The stock market? Yeah. Oh, then you uh, you couldn't finish off Mr. Livingston? Somebody's backing him. Somebody pretty darn clever. But I'll get Livingston. If only I could find out whose money's behind him. Your money, Gus. What? Oh, it's fortunate that you were such a generous husband. You mean that... that you've been backing Livingston with my money? Yes, dear. Every time you flooded the market, I was right in there buying. But it isn't serious. I'll sell you back the stock at exactly the same quotation. So, stabbed in the back and buy my own wife. Shh. Don't shout so, darling. You'll wake the children. I don't care. I'm sorry that I ever met you. That I ever married you out of pity, you ungrateful little... Oh, my shepherd. My Dresden Shepherd. Ah, oh, Susie, now you have really lost him. Never. Gus will never give up what he owns. And he owns me. Susie, I'm... I'm sorry. I, uh, I thought you left, Gus. Susie, I've got to know how you did it. Well, <laughs> John Marvey helped me to buy the stock. Yeah. And then... Knowing the enemy is half the battle. Uh, Aspasia, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't you like to catch a train? 
thanks for reminding me. I'm oh, sorry, I feel like someone who has been trying to give acting lessons to Sarah Bernhardt. Susie, I want to ask you one question. Yes. I love you, Gus. That's what you wanted to know, wasn't it? And all I wanted to do was to punish those rotters who insulted you. What hurt me is that I didn't know what you were doing, what you were thinking. And I suddenly realized that we weren't together anymore. I felt like a woman you'd married out of pity. Oh, I was... I was angry when I said that. Do you know uh, what this piece of paper is? Major Parkington's list. Hmm? That's right. In flames. Oh, Gus, you're too big a man not to see farther than the Livingstons and their crowd. You want power, don't you? Well, well, I could help you if you'd let me. Well, I'd rather have you on my side than against me. Okay with you, partner? <laughs> okay, partner. Now pick up what's left of my Dresden Shepherd. I'm going to keep these pieces as a souvenir, Gus. One day I'll show them to our grandchildren, and I'll tell them... Tell them what? That... That the little Dresden shepherd was broken on one of the many days that their grandfather and grandmother fell in love with each other. Well, Amory, that's how the other Dresden doll was broken so many years ago. Granny. Mrs. Parkington. Uh, yes, Matty? The family is waiting in the drawing room. My family. Hmm. Amory, as you told me before, money can keep you out of jail. I have the money, but it's up to them to make the decision. I'm ready. All right. Let's get this over with. In just a moment, Greer Garson and Walter Pigeon will return in Act Three of Mrs. Parkington. Three of Mrs. Parkington, starring Greer Garson in the title role and Walter Pigeon as Major Parkington. In the Parkington drawing room, Amory Stillam has just concluded a staggering confession of fraud and theft to the members of his family. Mrs. Parkington sits quietly in a corner as the loving relations descend upon Amory. You, my old father, the great financial genius. Well, what did you do with my the money? My husband, a thief. Now, wait a minute, Helen. Don't raise your voice to me, you coward. Letting me find out about this in public. You didn't dare tell me alone. Helen, I tried to spare you. Spare me? Well, I'm going to get a divorce. My dear niece, better stick to what you've got. You won't find anything better at your age. Can you imagine what a field day this is going to be for the newspaper? I shouldn't worry you, Madeline. You and your four husbands. Why don't you shut up if that's all the advice oh, you, you can offer? Please be quiet. Don't you think it's time we let Great Granny say something? Go ahead, say something. Thank you, Jane. <clears throat> I didn't send for all of you at this uncomfortable hour to listen to your indignation. What Amory did is done. But we're still a family. And there is a way to keep Amory out of jail. Money. He wants money. Granny doesn't want to do anything until she gets your approval. How much money, you crook? I'll have to have a million and a quarter shares at $25 each. But they are $31 million. Why? Why nobody has that much money. I have. But that money's our inheritance. Our one interest is to keep me out of jail. Why should I lose my share of the inheritance for you? I need money. So do I. I found out one thing married you, Amory. The only things you really have in this world are what you can buy. And I intend to keep on buying. Yes, yes indeed. What do you want me to do? I tried to kill myself. Your sudden departure might have solved everything. Jack, what's your reaction? Forget that I'm your but father. But it's difficult for me to be impartial. You see, I never really liked you. So, you refuse. All of you? Indeed we do. Ned was right. This whole family is rotten, worthless. Well, there's only one thing left for me to do. And I'm going to do it. Give myself up. That's what the Major would have done, Amory. Thank you, Granny. I don't know about you others, but I'm certainly going to get myself a drink. Well, well, I'm going to get Oh, don't, dear, don't. Well... Thanks for trying, Granny. Oh, great Granny. First Ned, eh? And now your father. But tears won't help, Jane. 
I shed oceans of tears after my son was killed. Our world just fell to pieces, the Major's and mine. We went to England to try to forget. I remember a day in London when I had a visit from a baby. I went to Sussex, Sherry. Why didn't you tell me Gus was there at Oakville? And you, here in this dreary hotel alone. I'm better off here, Aspasia. All I do is cry these days. And Gus can't stand that. Oh, it seems so senseless. You raise a son, he marries his children, and then a, a polo pony stumbles. But you and... must forget, darling... Oh, Gus was quite gay when I saw him at Oakville, entertaining all the time. I'm glad. Uh, did you know the Prince of Wales is there for the hunt? Oh, yes. Gus seems quite happy. This, uh, uh, uh oh, what is her name? This, uh, Lady Nora, uh... Who? Oh, but I'm chattering on and on. It isn't important. Lady who? Lady Nora Ebsworth. She plays the hostess beautifully. Oh, uh -huh. Oh, it's just like Gus to get someone to run things for him. He's so lazy. Well, a man who loses an only son, he needs someone near him. Lady Nora Ebsworth, eh? Hmm, funny. Gus hasn't mentioned her to me. Oh, right, beautifully. Oh, a stunning woman. So? She takes my place, does she? And he likes it. Matty? Yes, ma'am. Matty, pack my bags. I'm going to Paris. Yes, Okay, Susie, but Gus is in... Oh, I'm not going to Oakvale in morning clothes, Aspasia. Susie, at last. Susie. Susie, this is quite a surprise. Gus, oh, you're looking so well. Why, I'd almost forgotten what a handsome husband I have. By Gad Parkington, where have you been hiding this enchanting creature? Oh, uh... Your Royal Highness, may I present Mrs. Parkington, sir? Your Royal Highness. Well, madame, I'm very happy that you've come. For one reason, Mama's always dubious about my friends. You know how Victoria is. She prefers it when I visit married people. And what are your preferences, sir? In this case, I thoroughly agree with Mama. Uh, oh, uh, Lady Nora. Susie, this is Lady Nora... Oh, Ab I know, I know. Oh. Lady Nora Edsworth. Susie, if, if, if I'd only known you were coming, uh, 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 we've been out hunting, fox hunting, you oh, know. Oh, poor darling. <laughs> oh, it's Daisy is with me. She's mm. unpacking. I feel so apologetic, Mrs. Parkington. This is a very poor welcome. Oh, you're very kind, Lady Nora. But I'm one of those people who always feels welcome in her own house. Oh. <laughs> and uh, how long are you planning to stay? Until the hunting season is over. Oh, by Gad Parkington, I'm starved. How about oh, breakfast? It's a wonderful idea. Come in, all of you. Come on, breakfast. Breakfast, of course. Come on. Won't you join us, Mrs. Parkington? Nothing like a game of billiards after dinner. Thank you, sir. I'd much prefer to watch Lady Nora putting both of you to shame. It would seem that she is mistress of every male art. Don't you believe in the equality of the sexes, Mrs. Parkinson? In certain things, yes. For me, I believe in the superiority of the female. Hush, Aspasia, dear. Lady Nora is about to win the game. Oh, uh, she missed. Oh, no, it touched. Definitely. Never. Decision, umpire? Well, I'm sorry to contradict Lady Nora, but the ball did not touch. Oh, uh, Gus. Huh? Gus here. Mm. I've been speaking with some shipbuilders in London, and I have some wonderful ideas for improving our new life. Oh, good. Tell me about them, Susie. It's your play, Augustus. Uh-oh. You'll forgive me, but when an American starts talking business, there's no stopping him. You must be patient with us, Lady Nora. We've had to accomplish in a hundred years what other nations have taken a thousand years to do. The best things can be achieved only with time. That's true. And they can't be destroyed in a short hunting season. Uh... I, uh, uh I, I, I need a drink. Oh, of course. Here, dear. Oh, no, not champagne, my dear. Augustus prefers whiskey after dinner. Oh, no, really? Uh, well, uh, 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 as a matter of fact, I, I think I'll have a, a ginger beer. Yes, sir, ginger beer for a third. Poor Gus, you're really worn out, aren't you, Lady Nora? You made him ride too hard this morning. Oh, you seemed very happy this morning before. Uh, before the hunt, you mean, of course. Of course. 
But if you're tired, Augustus... Oh, he'll never admit he's tired. But I know him so well. We've been married... Oh, how long is it, Gus? Uh, well, uh... Oh, I hate to think. Yeah. Don't you agree, Lady Nora, that after such a long time, marriage ceases to be a game, becomes an institution? I've always had a passion for games and a horror of institutions. <laughs> and what do you say about it, Parkington? Uh, I, 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 I really, sir, I don't know what they're talking about. About marriage, Gus. Oh. Lady Nora has some rather... Modern ideas on the subject. I confess, I haven't considered it very seriously. Oh, that's quite an oversight, Lady Nora. Mama, for instance, believes first in matrimony and then in the British Empire. You should have a little talk with her sometime. It would be a great privilege, sir. Well, then, I think I can arrange it for you. Mama needs another lady-in-waiting. She'd be most interested in these modern ideas of yours. Oh, but I didn't mean... I assume you'd accept a command, Lady Nora. Well, really? Mm, excellent. You will leave for Osborne with me tonight. But, Your Highness, I was not prepared for... for... such an honor? Nevertheless, it is yours. Sir, I... I will need a little time. Oh, of course you will. So we'll say, um, in half an hour? Thank you. I'm deeply honored. Sorry I won't be able to stay for another game, Augustus. It's always best to stop when one is winning. The hunting season was short, Augustus. But stimulate. Um, fill my glass, will you, Parkington? Oh, oh, sorry, sir. No, no, not ginger beer. Oh, champagne. Thank you, Parkington. Lady Nora will be very happy at Osborne. Life there is so, so very regular. Uh, here you are, sir. Allow me. To the Parkington. Thank you, Your Highness. Uh, sir, did you just wink at my wife? Parkington, what a thing to say. Well, I must leave you too. I do wish you were British, Mrs. Parkington. I'd ask Mama to take out her trusty sword and knight you. Susie, let me in. Unlock this door and let me in. Go to sleep, Gus. Run away, darling. Pleasant dreams. But I want to talk to you. That's the fourth attempt tonight. I wonder what you're so disturbed about. I can't imagine, Aspasia. Susie... I, too, wish to tell you something. It is goodbye. Goodbye? Yes, I'm going back to France. I've bought a little house. Oh, but a stage uh, I know when an actor should leave the stage. Oh, I don't know what to say. We'll miss you. I'm glad. Charlie, there is something I've been hiding from you all these years. It, it's hard for me to say it. I've known it all the time. Oh, Aspasia, when I woke up after my wedding night and found you there in my room, I knew that you were in love with Gus. But, but you never said a word. Oh, how you must have hated me. Yes. I hated you so when you arranged my life, when you furnished my house, when Gus would turn to you for advice. And then there came a day when he turned to me. And I knew that he was mine for always. And from that moment, dearest Aspasia, I loved you. Oh, my Shelby. What's that? What's that noise? Outside your window here. Look, Gus, he's climbing the balcony. <laughs> you see, when a man of his age risks his neck to join his wife, he deserves... Deserves what? Consideration. <laughs> Goodbye, Cherie. Susie! Susie, I'm stuck. Oh, Gus, be careful. Well, do something. <laughs> Don't move now. Here, give your hands. I'll help you. It's about time. Well, pull, <laughs> Susie, pull. Well, how's this? Well, oh, 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 oh there. <laughs> Susie, you behaved absolutely outrageously. You've offended our guests, and I'm not going to stand for it. Oh, aren't you glad you won't have to go fox hunting anymore? Oh. That's awfully tiring for a man of your age. <laughs> What was the idea of keeping that door locked? Look, if you ever do that again, I'll knock it down and... Oh, no, no. Climbing a balcony is so much more romantic. Yeah, but I'm too old for this. Well, at least you admit it. Oh, Susie. Oh, Gus, darling. By George and by Jasper, I'll never understand women as long as I live. That's your charm, dear. Oh. Oh, Gus. <sighs> Our world's growing smaller, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Herbert yeah. gone. Mm. Alice married. And now space is leaving us, too. But all roads lead back to you, Susie. And there are two things you can rely on. 
I'll always be a scoundrel, and I'll always love you. You know what you married, huh? I know what I got. There's a part of you that's strong and magnificent and exciting. That's the part I love. And then there's a the part that's egotistic, ruthless, and very vain. And that part you forgive, huh? I always have. And I always will, no matter what happens. And we're going right on, partner. We'll keep building the railroads, building the ships. And look, there's a new thing coming up. Automobiles. We'll go into that. Okay with you, partner? Okay, partner. Susie, our grandchildren are going to inherit a lot of money. You changed, Gus. You never had much respect for people who inherited their money. Ah, but our grandchildren will be different. But if they're not, I hope to heaven one of us is still around to teach them. Oh, God. Sparrow, what's the matter? Why are you crying? (laughs) Because, because we're together again. Because we're together again. (laughs) He was killed, Jane, not six months later, racing one of those automobiles he built. Great Granny. Oh, Jane, darling, I made a mistake letting you send your young man away tonight. There's only one thing that counts, being with the man you love. Oh, it's too late. It's never too late. Now you go and find Ned and make him understand. Well, what are you waiting for, eh? What are you waiting for? Go on. Right now. Let's get. Matty? What is it? They're having breakfast. They said to join them if you'd like. Oh. That's generous of them, Matty. Yes, I think I will. Pass the egg, Jack. Poor Amory. Isn't it like him to start a mess like this and then run out and leave us to clean it up? Gonna be a busy day. I wonder if Father's seen the district attorney yet. Well... I'm certainly glad to see you taking it so well. It was really quite an ordeal, Grandmother, but at least it's over with. Thousands of little people are going to be ruined because of Amory. Have any of you given them a thought? Well, a smart man once said, there's a sucker born every minute. Ah. And there's going to be a few more born every minute and any minute now, and you'll be one of them, Jack Boy. I have decided to pay back Every penny that Amory stole. What did you say? You can't throw our inheritance away without our permission. You said so yourself. I was going to ask you before I made an investment. I am not going to ask you when I pay back a debt. Ha! And what would your famous major have said to that? I'll tell you. His empire was built for people who deserved an empire. People with guts and imagination. Who know how to create, not exploit. All these years... I've seen you only as we both wanted you to be. But now I see you as you really are. Weak, stingy, selfish, and afraid. Amory's no worse than the rest of you. And when I pay back what he stole, we'll all be starting from scratch again. You can't do this to me. It's as much our money as yours. Talk about second child. Well, I think she should see a duck. She's nuts. But we may have trouble proving it. I'd like to see the Duke's face when those alimony checks I send him stop coming in would almost be worth a trip to France. Unfortunately, I shan't be able to afford it now. So long, Mother Darling. Well, Gus, one of us is still around to teach him. I knew she was crazy. Look at her talking to that portrait on the wall. Okay with you, partner. Matty? Matty? Well, where are you, girl? They're gone, Matty. Gone for good. Well, we've got a lot to do. And when I'm through with the lawyers, we'll start packing. Packing, ma'am. We're going back to where the Major found me. Mrs. Graham's boarding house. Sleeping Rock, Nevada. Back for a well-deserved curtain call come tonight's stars, Greer Gossen and Walter Pigeon. Well, I'm sure, Bill, that this theater of yours has won the gratitude of millions of listeners for bringing them their favorite screenplay. Well, I hope so, Walter. Good night. Good, Good night. night, Greer and Walter. Best wishes to you all. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you 
from Hollywood. American Forces Radio and Television Service. to the Mid-Atlantic Voice of the American Forces Radio Service. CSB 83 Radio, Lodges Field, the Azores, Portugal. 